The question is how to advise someone to break the relationship. Sometimes even the person wants to break the relationship, but he doesn't have the motivation. Now, in order to help someone to break the relationship, first we don't want to tell them to break the relationship. Because when you tell them, it can offend the person. And the person will turn off more. And it's, this is something we want to do, even though it could be for God's purpose, for God's reason. But we want to listen to the person. And so if we are doing counseling, then we ask the person, how is the relationship? Is it working out? Is it not working out? What are some good things? What are some bad things? And the person says, oh, this problem, this problem. So if we have a checklist and say, okay, how is the person relationship with God? Does he know God? And is, uh, does he care about you? Does he love you? Does he communicate? Does he listen to you? Uh, is he rough? Is he gentle? Uh, is you know, all these qualities that you have a checklist that you know and you can ask the person and the person says, oh, this person has all kinds of problems. And then you ask the person, so what do you want to do? The person says, I want to break away from the person, but I cannot do it now. And then, because basically this is very important. If this person is this level, you want the person to come to this level, you cannot just tell them, break away. It doesn't work. For most people, for anyone, it doesn't work. You need to take it step by step. You need, need to let them know, uh, ask them how it is, and what are the difficulties, why is it difficult for you to break the relationship? Uh, why is it difficult? Uh, uh, she may tell you different reasons. Well, we've been together for a long time. I'm not sure if he's suitable. Uh, and I, I don't know if I can find another guy. All these reasons. And then we can respond to them one by one to lead them to know that even if you don't find any guy, if you marry this guy, you're in worse trouble. So, but then we want to lead them to understand that. And then, and then let them know also, the sooner you can break away, the better it is. Then it will, you know, it's because once it lingers, it's very hard to, to cut it off. And now, sometimes it can be dangerous too to cut off. I know that there are some people who cut off a relationship and they are hurt by the other person or even killed. It has happened in Hong Kong. It can probably happen here. With non-Christian, especially with rough people, it can happen. So people have to do it very carefully and do it gently. And do it in a way to say, oh, you are so good in many ways, you are nice in so many ways, but I think we're not suitable. And and I, I bless you in your future, but it's better that uh, we, we separate. And, and so do it in a gentle way, but then, and then also suggest, uh, I would suggest that we don't communicate anymore. Uh, that we can put this down. I still care about you, I can send you text message, uh, but we don't want to talk about, we, want to, uh, we don't want to continue this relationship. So uh, to talk about it in a public place, don't talk about it in a private place because if the person is angry, he might beat you up. <laughs> and then or rape the person. So something can happen. So do it in a public place that there is safety. And then uh, if need help, the sister should tell other people around them, uh, this person I just break up and that person has some uh, uh, violence and uh, I need your help to protect me. <laughs> and what we can do together as a group to protect that person so that person is not hurt by that person. And then sometimes, a lot of times, just unwilling. Oh, we have been dating for so long and it's hard to stop. But the harder to stop, the longer they stay, and it's even worse. They've been together for three years, and then it changed to five, six, seven, ten years, and it's even harder to separate. So it's better, once you know it doesn't work, it's not the right person for you, you think you cannot marry that person, the marriage will not be healthy, will not be happy, then you stop right away. And you would notice that many people really are not suitable for marriage. Many people, they are violent, they are rough, they don't listen, they don't, they don't communicate, they just want to get something, they just want to have sex, and or emotional, and all these qualities. But in this world, there are just not so many good choices. <laughs> Because people are sinners, they're not good. Even Christians are not good. 
So we need to first, the first step we do is to raise up ourselves to be a healthier Christian, more mature Christian, a loving and a Christian who can communicate so that we are more suitable for ministry, for blessing people, for evangelism and for dating. We don't do it for dating, but when we're suitable people to serve God, we also can become better people for dating. But I want to tell you that there are many ministers too who have problem in marriage. Because they know how to minister, but they don't know how to relate. And they don't want to listen to the wives. And they, when they go home, they will just preach to the wife. It doesn't work. And I have ministers ask for help from me. They said, my wife make my mis ministry miserable. I feel so painful. So this is something as ministers, we really want to find only the right person from God and we want to keep that relationship so that the wife will feel good about my, our ministry. Like for me, I go to different countries so often. I want my wife to feel good about it. And we keep a lot of communication. Every day we have communication when possible. So that she feel good about me going to different places. And she saw me help so many people and she feel good about it. And she feel good above all because I love her and care about her that she knows that I love her very much. That way, it doesn't affect my ministry.